hello welcome back um we have a little over an hour left we're gonna try to end by 4 30 hawaiian time um and so we're in the home stretch and we're gonna go through i did uh, i forgot when we were uh looking through the website earlier i did want to show you all um the automated detection data. So if you go to a platform, specific platform page um, or project page on the real-time website um, and scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page, there's this automated detection data link. Um, and if you click that, it'll show some uh, summary information of the automated detections, a map, um, the, here we see the, the glider track with the, this is automated detection data, background noise, background noise spectra. Um, and then here are the daily tally tables. Um, and Mark showed you this in his slides earlier for the real-time data. Um, so each of these is a live link to the different days. And if you scroll all the way down, um, it will show you the, the latest days down at the bottom. Um, so we see data from today. And so this table is uh, the one that Mark showed. Um, and this is the example from the Stell Wagon Glider that's out right now. So you can see the different uh, 15 minute periods um, with the summary of the classification data for each of the species, the other category, which is um, any of the other pitch tracks um, that weren't classified as these four species, the duration, and then you have the links here. PT stands for pitch track. Those are the links to the pitch track periods. So um, you'll see anywhere there is a PT, that's a 15 minute chunk where we do have pitch track data for. Um, and then for the gliders, you'll have a map link with the lat long data. So you can click into that as well and see um, the glider location at that time of transmission. Um, or at that time of the period. And if you click the PT link, it'll take you to that specific pitch track page. So I did wanna show you where that was on the website. Um, so we are going to move into looking at the reference guide document. Um, so this was sent out as an attachment in um, multiple emails that I sent out to you all. Um, so you do have access to this and this will be posted at a later date on the Robots for Whales website, um, and we'll be updating the versions there. So you can always go back there to uh, see the latest version of the document. Um, so if you scroll down to the second page of the table of contents, you'll see this part two. This is the introduction to LFDCS real-time analysis protocol. So this is the whole section on the real-time stuff. So if you click um, there, it'll bring you down to this section. There's a little introduction you keep scrolling. This is um, similar to what Mark had on his slides. It just shows you kind of the uh, series of events that goes. There's the daemon, um, the old version shows the platform and kind of, you know, the satellite transmission of the data to the uh, onshore server um, uploaded to the publicly accessible Robots for Whales website. There's the pitch track data. It gets reviewed by an analyst. Um, and then you get daily occurrence estimates for the different species. Keeps going down. This is the uh, same, same diagram only for the buoy version. Um, here, there's a link to the reference study, which is um, a Roseway Basin glider deployment from 2014. Um, this is a great example. It's got some kind of fun, tricky pitch track periods. If you ever want to just kind of go in and click around, you can click around in any of the deployments. Um, this one was annotated by Mark, so you can see some of his notes that he took on that deployment. So that's just kind of an example. And we use some examples from that throughout this section of the document. Um, getting started, this is uh, just kind of some of the stuff that I've already showed you on the website. Um, we've got, you know, glider track, background noise, daily tally tables. Um, and then we get into the actual pitch track uh, page. We've gone through this already. So like the different codes for when it's recording or when it's not, um, the different call types. Ooh, one yes. thing you never made a distinction of 
the call library that's used on the real-time system is QM7. Yes. So that's different than the ones in um, both of the papers for the archival data that we did. So just in case you're wondering, it's they're different call libraries. So the humpback whale call types we incorporated are not um, on the real-time Yes, thank you, Jen. So, like, yeah, so a different different call libraries, slightly different call libraries, and um, and we also it's a similar um, analysis protocol um, as we do for the archival data, but there are some some differences. Um, so there's here in the document, there's just kind of a run through of determining species. There's an uh, emphasis here on being conservative. So when you're looking at pitch track data, um, and I'll go through examples of this. There's um, cases where you you know, as you do the analysis, your eyes will adjust to seeing, you know, you'll be able to pick out noise versus actual calls and, um, and things like that. So, but you do want to stay conservative because you are not, you're not seeing like the full picture necessarily because you're not getting the full spectrogram. Um, so here on page 96 of the reference document, this is, um, like a one page, it's a, quite a long document, um, but it's all there in one place. It is a one page quick guide for the four species. We have North Atlantic right whale, say whale, fin whale, and humpback whale. Um, this is kind of your go-to shortcut guide for how to score the different species as possibly detected uh, or detected, possibly detected or not detected um, for any pitch track period that you're looking at. Um, so I do want to emphasize, if you are doing a real-time analysis, don't just rely on the quick guides, actually read the document um, and, you know, develop your own uh, protocol if you need to. The quick guides are just like kind of once you have your bearings, they're just, uh, they're nice to just kind of look back on as a quick reference. Um, so we're going to go through those individually. They are repeated in the different uh, species specific sections. So the first section that we come to is uh, the North Atlantic right whale section. Um, so the quick guide here, you can see uh, detected, possibly detected or not detected. Um, this is uh, whether we see classifications by LFDCS for that species. So detected for right whale, you have to have classified up calls. Um, and I will be showing uh, examples of all of this um, for you in a moment. Um, there's information about whether you're looking for a pattern in those calls. Um, context is very important, especially in examples where you're looking at cases where you might have North Atlantic right whales with humpbacks also um, present. So um, context is a big one that we look at that is, um, that's one of the main reasons why you need a human analyst to look at this and kind of confirm the detections. Uh, and then um, just a quick guide for number of calls needed. Um, so this is the criteria that we developed to say, you know, how many calls do we need from this species to say not detected, possibly detected or detected. Um, for each of the species, we have just kind of a general intro to what kind of calls um, we're looking at. So for North Atlantic right whales, of course, we're usually looking for up calls um, in the pitch, tra pitch track data. Um, all the sections have, uh, references that refer back to um, papers that have published on these calls. Thank you, Susan. Um, and then you scroll down and you get to kind of this detailed section for each species. We go through um, examples where we've scored them as detected, possibly detected or not detected. So here we're looking at this first example here um, for uh, North Atlantic right whales, um, this is an example where we would score them as detected. And so to score a period as detected for North Atlantic right whale, you have to have at least three up calls. Um, and that might seem like a lot, but that's, we're staying conservative with that. Um, there are cases I've come across where I'm like, oh, there's one call, of course it's an up, like it's a right whale, I know it's a right whale, but we, we do wanna stay conservative with it. So um, here, this example, and there's this little, um, there are these boxes here that kind of break down what's going on in the screenshot. So it's not, it, most of these are not gonna show the full 15 minute period. Um, so for example, here, we just have two minutes of data, um, pitch track data showing. And in the boxes here, we can see examples of up calls. Um, 
So for right whales to say detected, if we scroll back up to the quick guide here, you need at least three up calls and at least one of those up calls has to be classified. Um, for possibly detected, um, we're looking at maybe one to two um, up calls uh, with at least one classified, or you might have multiple up calls, at least three that are just, they just don't have any classifications. Um, and if that's the case, you would probably score that as possibly detected. Um, because the detector, it is pretty good at catching uh, up calls and classifying them. So here, this is an example where we would score it as detected. So we have three up calls, two of which are classified. And you can tell here, there's a call type six underneath and call type eight, both of which are North Atlantic right whale call types um, that we have built in the call library. You can see the Mahal Nobis distance underneath that. This one's unclassified, but because we have the other two, we have at least one that's classified, then we can still say detected. And feel free, um, I am gonna, I'm breezing through this a bit. Uh, if you have questions, please drop them into the chat or raise your hands. Sorry, in-person humans, I'm kind of like computer centric over here. Um, but yeah, thank you, Jen. <laughs> Jen is monitoring for questions. Um, so feel free to drop questions as we go. Um, so, okay, so if we scroll down, we have another example down here of uh, where we would score as detected for right whale. Um, so here we have multiple up calls. They're beautiful, they're loud. They have a nice clear shape um, and multiple classifications. We have a couple that are unclassified, but we have even just within these two minutes of data, we have uh, four classified right whale up calls here, even more down here. So this is like, you see this and you're like, oh, great, detected, easy score. We have right whales there. Yeah, uh -huh. that's a that's a good day when you get that. Possibly detected, those can get a little tricky. Um, so for right whales here, um, so these are uh, examples on their own. So if it's, uh, we have like one minute of data here, you might have like a 15 minute period where you only have a really, like one really faint uh, up call, but it's classified, um, but you don't have any other up calls. Um, so since we need at least three with one classified to say detected, this would have to be scored as possibly detected because we don't have um, we don't have that. And same goes for this example down here. Um, we have one classified up call. If these two um, uh, minutes of data were actually in the same period, this would still be a possibly detected case um, because you only have two up calls. You have two classifications, but you still only have two up calls. So we're staying conservative um, and we would score that as possibly detected. Scroll down to a not detected example. We have this oh, rough, this like little faint, Bit short. I've seen. I see a lot of these lately. There's a lot of tricky, like faint up calls, um, and a lot of times, you know, they're probably a right whale, but we just can't say for sure, um, especially for management purposes. So um, that would be a not detected. But this is where the notes box at the bottom of each pitch track page on the website comes in real handy. So you can say not detected for a whole pitch track period. Um, but leave a note if you want to um, saying, oh, it doesn't have the panel number, but say this was like panel three, you would say something like, you know, possible faint unclassified up call in P3 or panel three um, and score it as not detected for right whale, but you do have that kind of flagged by the note that you would leave. Okay, moving on to say whales. Um, Quick guide here, we have um, whether it's classified by LFDCS. So yes, we do have to have classifications to say detected for say whales um, and possibly detected for say whales. Uh, pattern, so um, for say whales, to say detected, we're specifically looking for doublets or triplets of down sweeps. And we'll look at examples in a second here. Um, context, hump X, we love them but they mimic everything. So there may be humpback uh, low frequency down sweeps um, that can get confused. So we, we really do kind of rely on the doublets and triplets 
Um, and if there, if there are obvious signs of humpback presence, um, we have to take that context into account and exercise some caution there. Number of calls needed. So to say a say whale is detected in real time um, for a pitch track period, we have to have at least three classified single down sweeps. Um, or um, you could have like a doublet or a triplet and you have to have at least one of those calls classified. Possibly detected, um, maybe there's no real pattern observed, like you're not seeing obvious doubles or triplets, maybe you're seeing a couple of single down sweeps. Um, there may be humpbacks present, so you might wanna exercise caution there. And then um, you might have like one or two classified single calls. So again, some kind of more detailed description here with references. And then we get down to um, the detected examples. So here we see a beautiful triplet. These are very rare and exciting when you see them. Oh, they're so fun. Um, so this is an example where even just this one um, set of down sweeps, you could say detected for say whale for that entire 15 minute pitch track period. So um, you've got a uh, triplet here, you've got three um, down sweeps with the it's about three seconds, three second interval between down sweeps is the typical, that's what's uh, been published about a three second interval um, between the calls, two of which are classified. So if we go back to our lovely little quick guide here, um, you need at least one classified call within a doublet or a triplet. So we could have had these three calls and just one of these classified um, and one call types one, two, and three currently in the call library for real-time data, those correspond to say whale down sweeps. So we can see both of these um, second and third down sweeps have been classified as call type one, which is say whale. So that's a lovely example. Oh, and they made it even nicer. They have a double classified um, doublet down here as well in the same period. Oh gosh, what are those? What are those threes? A little fuzzy, but they're classified. Um, keep scrolling down. Uh, this is an, a different, separate example. Um, we have three down sweeps, single down sweeps in this period. Um, and this is kind of one of our little like caveats to the say whale classifications. This is kind of a, um, a case where there's overlap between a humpback call type, call type 17, um, which can often pick up, um, you know, often, but it, it will tend to pick up a uh, say whale down sweep sometimes. Um, and if that's the case and there's no other signs of humpback calling, so um, we might see like higher frequency humpback calls, but in this case, there's nothing, there's just the down sweeps. Um, so if it's just the down sweeps and you're seeing call type 17, um, we can still say that that's, uh, that's say whale in this case, because we know that there's kind of a funky overlap with those call types, because um, they are so similar. Um, so we have three call types, and in this case, we are counting call type 17 as um, a say whale call type in this case. Um, so we have at least two classifications there. So going back up to the quick guide, sorry if I'm making anyone seasick. Um, we have at least uh, three, you know, you know, this one doesn't, uh oh, it doesn't, no, oh, whoopsies, we need to fix that. This is why we're doing this. Um, so this would actually, by the quick guide criteria at this point, um, this would be a possibly detected scenario. Um, it is very, very likely a say whale because there's no other signs of humpback, but um, we do, in the quick guide, we, we do want three, at least three classifications of single calls. Um, so that actually should be a possibly detected category. That'll be version 1.1. We're already working on that. Um, possibly detected <clears throat> as above. Um, so this case, we have one kind of faint down sweep classified as call type three, which is say whale. Um, no other signs of humpback or anything like that. So uh, this, if that was all you get in a 15 minute period, you would say detect or possibly detected for say whale. Um, down here, we've got another example here. This one's a bit nicer, it's louder. Um, call type number one, say whale. 
Um, so if that's all you had in a period um, as evidence, you would say possibly detected as well. Um, same goes for if these two were combined in the same 15 minute period, you would still say possibly detected because you, you don't have at least three classified down sweeps, single down sweeps. Not detected. Um, that's essentially when you, you just don't see down sweeps at all. So if you have um, at least you know one down sweep in a period, especially if it's classified, you can say it possibly detected for say whale. Okay, moving on down to fin whales. Um, so fin whales here, you do need classifications um, for saying detected or possibly detected for fin whale. Um, with this call library, they're classified as call type four. Um, so, uh, and this is important because the fin whales produce that 20 hertz pulse, um, or are we calling them notes now? Is that the, okay, pulse. But um, uh, they, I know, semantic. Um, <laughs> so um, they produce a 20 hertz pulse. Um, and if there happens to be a, a noise that is just at 20 hertz, it can be classified. Um, so we do want to be careful of that. Um, or there may be, uh, when you're looking at um, noise in a period, like for example, down here in this example, there's, a, there's one that's not classified. Um, in the context here, we can tell that it's, it's very likely to be a fin whale because it falls within the pattern of the pulse train here. Each one of these is a fin whale pulse. Um, but to the naked eye, looking at unclassified pulses, there's no way that we can like really determine um, by ourselves that that's right at 20 hertz. Um, so if you're seeing a bunch of unclassified noise that looks like it's about 20 hertz, just be really cautious of that. It can just be low frequency noise. Um, so what we're really looking for for fin whales are these really nice repeated um, call type four classified pulses. Um, so going back up to the quick guide here, um, you want, uh, we look for at least four, um, four or more classified pulses in a row. Um, so, and following the um, internote intervals. So down here, there is, um, there's some references, this Murano et al. Uh, 2012 paper um, talks about the seasonal pattern of internote intervals um, with the pulse trains. So the intervals may shift seasonally. There is kind of a general pattern. It doesn't, they don't always follow it, but um, I think it's in the spring months, they tend to have longer um, intervals between the pulses. Um, it can get up to even like 15 or 16 seconds or more between the pulses. Um, so springtime months, you might see uh, the pulse is more spread apart versus winter months, we get into shorter inter internet intervals between the pulses where you get, um, it can get down to, you know, seven to eight seconds between the pulses. So there is some seasonal variability. And this paper um, does a really good job of kind of depicting those patterns. Um, so we do, we do look at, um, at those intervals. They're animals, they're not metronomes, but they're very, very close. They're very, uh, they're very monotonous. Um, so it is important to look for those consistent intervals between the pulses. You can get low frequency noise that's classified as call type four just because it randomly hits at 20 Hertz. Um, and they might just be random spacing, just be very skeptical of those because if they're not following the internet interval, um, they could just be noise. So. You need at least four classified consecutive pulses to say detected. Um, you might get a few in a row, um, you know, two or two or three classified. We would say possibly detected for that. Um, and then if you have like no clear pattern with the classified pulses, or if you just have a bunch of unclassified low frequency pulses, it's probably just low frequency noise. There's a couple of exceptions to that, but. Um, that is the general rule. So if we scroll down, this is a really classic example of um, a fin whale pulse train. So we can see a very regular interval here of it's about 10 seconds in this case um, between each pulse, almost 
all of them are classified as call type four, which is the fin whale call type. So it detected here. It's a great example. Possibly detected down here. Um, so in the box, the blue box here, we have this. Uh, it's unclassified. So mm, you know, maybe a maybe a fin whale, maybe just noise. The fact that it's not classified means it's probably not hitting right at 20 hertz. Um, and then we have a gap here. But then we have these three that are classified as fin whale, and they do follow a somewhat consistent uh, interval pattern. Um, you want to be really careful of like kind of making up stories about the data. So if you're like, oh, if there was just like a pulse right there, you know, like we would have a we would have a pulse train. Um, just if it's not there, it's not there. So just be careful of that. You might get random kind of single classified pulses. Um, so this would this would be a possibly because you don't have four consecutive classified pulses. Yep. Oh yes. What if you have one or two classified, multiple unclassified pulses but very loud and consistent IPI? Oh, I love that question because that is so valid, Kirsten. Um, there are definitely periods that have come across where a fin whale is. I feel like it's like two feet away from the hydrophone. There are like multiple harmonics. It's super loud. Um, and it's just not picked up the detect by the uh, classifier, probably because they're either longer or um, sometimes you'll even get if there's multiple uh, animals vocalizing at the same time, you'll even get overlapping pulses um, where it just it makes the whole pitch track longer. It merges the pulses into one pitch track. Um, so, yes, there are cases where I have scored periods as detected for fin whale um, where it's a it's a lot of pulses that are not classified it is it's fairly rare um but it's it's really obvious when the, that's the case so kirsten yes and those um but leave a note if that's the case um but yeah i i have seen that where they're just not classified because usually it's because they're longer than the typical um than the exemplars that were put into the the call library there is also um from the archival data looking at it and when we do the local frequency pass, you're able to really see the down sweeps of the fin whales. Um, and when you look at it over over different seasons, they they actually are not all at exactly 20 hertz. And they have this kind of like really cool rainbow arch pattern. And so I assume a lot of that sometimes can be just from them being at a different frequency that we haven't incorporated in the call library. Yeah. So. It's they're pretty far. Oh be yeah, cautious. Don't, yes. don't don't take Caution that in your analysis, but I just assume that could be sometime. <laughs> because the fin whale, the fin whale detector can get there's a, you can get a lot of false detections with, the, with this fin whale. So. Yeah, yeah. Like right now, I think um, the Stellwagen bank glider. Uh, there's a lot of a lot of false detections on that. Sometimes with the uh, gliders, there can be like rudder noise and stuff that um, can get classified. But the yeah, so just just. Yes, be conservative is like the theme of the day with real time analysis. But there are definitely periods where there's unclassified ones that are loud and it's awesome. Um, be cautious. Okay, moving on. Um, here's another example of possibly detected. Uh, we have two classified pulses in a row, maybe another one over here, but it's not classified. So mm, don't let it fool you. Um, there's one single classified call there, um, but we don't have, oh, and then down here we have, we have two and then we have a gap. So, and then we have like these two over here that are unclassified that they could very easily just be faint low frequency noise. Um, so again, as uh, Mark said, you might not have heard him, but don't make up stories about the data. Um, and so exercise caution definitely here you're not you don't have any cases where you have four consecutive classified pulses not detected oh that was a great example of low frequency noise gross ignore it don't pay attention um i mean pay attention but the fact that it's not classified uh probably means it's not right at 20 hertz and it's randomly spaced right also um a lot of faint kind of spurious pitch tracks here, which Mark mentioned before. Um, we get artifacts, which are is essentially when the algorithm tries to connect to um, two noises uh, with a pitch track. So uh, artifacts 
especially if and if there's a lot of dark blue like that means you know very very faint uh sounds um oftentimes that is that's just faint noise so this one you just it's it's probably just a lot of faint faint background noise not detected for fin whales same again same as here yeah this is this is a uh, kind of a good example here because they are kind of in a pattern but not classified it's possible but we, we like this would be a great one to say not detected because you don't have four consecutive classified you don't even have any actually any classifications here um but you can leave a note um if you wanted to for this period not detected for fin whale okay oh the favorite humpbacks <laughs> i'm kidding um for humpbacks they are so variable uh that there are cases where it's very obvious song um and there may not be classifications for them so humpbacks are kind of the exception where there you can have cases where you say detected um, without classification. So that's why we have the, the yes or no there for detected and possibly detected. Um, so humpbacks here, uh, we're, we're relying on the patterns uh, mainly. Um, and so for um, number of calls needed, we typically try to um, wait until we see at least like five or more um, calls that are grouped in a pattern together. Um, so you might get a song fragment uh, to say detected for humpback. If you just have like a, a handful, maybe like anywhere from one to four um, possible humpback calls that are grouped together, um, we would say possibly detected for that. We have some references here for you and some background. Um, and then getting into examples here. So examples of detected um, for humpback. Um, so in the purple boxes, if you zoom in a bit, uh, we can see these nicely defined, they're loud, patterned, these little uh, low frequency upsweeps here. One of them is classified as a right whale, but this is when uh, the human eye is really important. You can see the context um, where it is, it fits right in with this song pattern. Um, so we can say that that is, that's likely humpback, not right whale even though it's classified as right whale. Um, there, we do see some artifacts here. Those are, it's good to be um, kind of skeptical of when, when we see a lot of artifacts, it could be noise, but in this case, we do also see these defined calls um, or pitch tracks. They're nice and loud and they're patterned. Um, so here we have definitely over five uh, calls in a pattern. Um, and this is a good example too, because we, we don't have any humpback classifications here, but it's very obvious that there is a pattern, um, that there's a song pattern. So we could say detected for humpback at this point for this example. And then scrolling down, um, this is also a, a detected example. So we have uh, a grouping here of probably three calls. This one's a little questionable because it's just, it's uh, pretty much just an artifact, but it kind of falls into this this pattern here. This one is fairly well defined. It's kind of got some funky amplitude going on. But um, scrolling down, if if say like this was all you had in a whole period as evidence, this would probably be more like possibly detected simply because the the calls are so short. Um, it's hard to tell. It's hard to be certain if they're biological or not. And then we get to this. This is definitely. Um, a good indicator. We have a nice, um, oh, this would be like a moan probably for humpback and, uh, and down sweeps. Um, so clusters of patterns, but we have at least, uh, we have over five um, just in the different clusters um, and we have defined calls. So detected for humpback there. Possibly detected. Um, there are a lot of, um, or that you'll come across cases where there'll be these kind of um, clusters of pitch tracks. Oftentimes they're very faint. Um, and if there's a lot of artifacts and they're dark blue and super faint, um, they can easily just be noise. Um, 
we do see a little bit of definition. So those could be, um, those could be partial calls here maybe, but again, it's very faint. A lot of artifacts, we have a nice spin wheel pulse train there as well. Um, but because we don't have um, very well-defined calls in a pattern, uh, this would be possibly detected, like maybe a pattern. Um, so could there could be a humpback there, but we can't say for sure. Um, here's another case where we would score as possibly there's uh, an artifact. You could probably um, pretty much ignore that. It's literally just an artifact. There's not really much else going on with that. Um, and then down here though, we have a possible faint pattern. Um, when the calls get like these two, over here, these could be part of this pattern, but they're they're very very short and very very faint. Um, so it starts to get hard to uh, determine with certainty that those are biological um, and not just noise. So that ca this case here would again be possibly detected and not detected. You'll get faint noise. Doesn't really follow a pattern. Lots of artifacts which again are those uh, straight vertical pitch tracks. Um, really, really hard to say if these are biological or not. Um, again, feel free to use the notes box if you're looking at a, a period that has something like that. Um, and that is it for the scoring criteria for humpback. We do have a kind of a supplementary um, section on humpback uh, song. So it breaks down um, the song components into units or notes. Um, it shows it moving into like a phrase. So short patterned segments that are repeated. And once those are put together, you get into themes. Um, so they, you, you will get examples like this, where this is just a beautiful example of humpback song, very clean, defined pitch tracks, clear pattern, not a lot of artifacts. Can you really discuss how the analysts can recognize the, the given time to recognize these patterns? What short bits of them? Yeah, so, um, if you are, if you're working through a deployment, um, uh, Mark's asking me to kind of work, like explain how you might recognize uh, essentially like either individual notes or fragments of song. So um, as you work through a deployment, if you're looking, if you're starting to see like seasonal song patterns, you might get really wonderful examples um, where you can see, you know, uh, full themes, sometimes multiple themes within one period. Um, so you start to get familiar with the um, with the patterns, um, and and your eye will adjust to the different themes that are occurring in that season. Um, and they will shift seasonally. Uh, somewhere there's a document that I created a long time ago with like over oh, what ten years that. or something of yeah. um of examples of humpback song and it's, it's really cool they some years from one year to the next it's completely different um and then some years i think there was a there was a case where there are two years in a row where it was almost identical song pattern but there were a couple of variations in it um so it is cool if you're doing analysis over years you do start to see um the variation and sometimes the similarities between the seasonal song patterns um so as you become more familiar and that does take time you can, uh, you might get like a, a, a period where you have maybe just like these two down sweeps and maybe like this down sweep and that's all you see, right? But you're so, your eyes are so adjusted to that seasonal pattern um, that you're able to make a um, kind of a more, a more educated uh, evaluation of those pitch tracks, even though you don't have the full song pattern. Um, so you do you your eye can start picking out uh, fragments as you go if you're seeing seeing some faint stuff. Um, oops, sorry. Oh yes, artifacts. Oh, um, and if you if you are doing analysis for a real time platform, um, just be aware that 
the the web page um, will update periodically. So every two hours, uh, the there'll be a new transmission in typically um, of data. So um, sometimes uh, the website will freeze up for a, like a minute or two. Um, so you just kind of wait it out until it's able to to load everything. Um, and also it will take, what do we, five to 10 minutes? Yeah, so it'll, it'll take a little bit of time to, uh, for, your, for your analysts, for your analysis results to actually um, save and show up when you click onto that page. Once you hit the submit button on a page, you can, um, you can go back to that page. If you go back to it immediately, it won't show your score, but if you hit the refresh button, it will upload the page with your score on it. So just be aware, if you hit submit and then you go right back to that page and you're like, oh my gosh, it deleted my notes, it deleted my score, it does save it and it will show up in about five to 10 minutes um, when you click back to that page or you can hit the refresh button um, and it'll show your, your score immediately. So that is the real-time analysis protocol in an hour or what, well, half an hour really. Um, in a nutshell. <laughs> so at this point, we do have some extra time. I wanna pause if there's any questions at this point um, in the room or on Zoom for what we've talked about so far. Including everyone, be friends. Julian, if there aren't any questions right away, can you uh, talk about how an individual track is how you, how you determine uh, if an individual track is legit. So the, the four criteria you use. Where's that page? I lost that. I feel like I wrote a page about it. Yeah. Yes. So isolation, magnitude, classification. Con shape. Oh, shape, yeah. Um, yeah, so Mark is uh, asking me to take a minute to kind of walk you through, if you're looking at one, pitch track. Um, so how do you how do you like how do you look at one pitch track and evaluate it um, just on its own? Um, so let's let's go up to sorry scrolling very fast. We'll edit right this whales. out of the recording. Yes, right. <laughs> <laughs> Any points where we're gonna make you nauseated. Um, Hmm. Sorry, I've been teaching high school science for the last two years, so well, that's okay. emphasis on uh, keeping things entertaining. The one up, the one the, is, that's, that's kind of a good one. This guy here. Isolated, short, shaped, so. Okay, Mark likes this one. We'll go <laughs> here. So. <laughs> no, we'll start with we'll start with a mediocre pitch track. Um, so, okay, so you're looking at a single pitch track and you're trying to determine, is it biological? What species is it? Or is it just noise? Um, so we have kind of four, uh, four criteria that we consider when we look at pitch tracks. And um, I will, I, I wrote up these at one point and I will add this to the protocol document because it is important. Um, so we typically look at, uh, is the call isolated? Um, and so that's kind of taking into context. Uh, so is it isolated from noise? Um, is it isolated from humpback song? Um, so is it, so in this case, this guy, we would not consider this isolated. There's funky, faint noise all around it, the spurious pitch tracks, right? So this, um, so the isolation piece of this uh, is not great. It's surrounded by um, potential noise. So we look at we look at isolation or context of the call or the pitch track. Um, we look at classification. So classifications are really important. Typically, not so much for humpbacks because they're just you know humpbacks. Um, but for right whales, say whales, and fin whales, we rely heavily on classifications. So that's something to consider. If there was this call without the classification, you could say possibly. Um, but the classification is just an extra uh, layer of um, like the detector compared this call against all of the exemplars in the call, uh, call type in the call library. Um, and that helps provide some evidence uh, to support that this is in fact a right whale up call. 
um, call type eight is right whale, one of the right whale ones. Um, so we have isolation or context, we have classification. Um, amplitude is also really important. Uh, this one is not great for amplitude. There is a louder section here at the bottom, um, but sometimes you will get uh, like nice loud up calls like down here. Oh, lovely so loud so that's a good one right so um a lot of times faint as i've said before faint dark blue or even light blue pitch tracks can easily be noise um so that is something to consider here uh is the amplitude it's not a not a great example but um you're also taking into consideration that's classified as well um so you have uh isolation uh classification, amplitude, and shape. Thank you. Um, so shape is the fourth criteria that we use to evaluate single pitch tracks. Um, so the shape is essentially kind of like, you can look at smoothness of the pitch track. If it's like, if it's very jagged, maybe you have like, we might have a artifact right there. Um, so not great shape. Also, it's a bit short. Um, and there's some uh, probably some faint noise here that are also uh, like similar length, right? So uh, the length of the call is also important to look at as well. So again, down here we have I feel bad kind of comparing these because they're so yeah it's shapely. <laughs> we have shapely up calls. Um, this is yeah we have the beautiful check mark up call shape here. So this um, I mean aside from this little. Thing as far as uh, possible noise, as far as context, like this is a great example. Shape is good, amplitude is good. It's pretty isolated. There's only like one like little noise thing. It's classified as right whale, right? Like this is a great example um, where all four criteria um, are indicating that that is in fact a biological. That's a right whale up call. Um, this one, as I said before, is mediocre. Um, according to those contexts. And I do, I will add that page to the um, protocol document in version 1.1 um, coming to you soon. So that uh, those four criteria of amplitude, context, or isolation, uh, classification, and shape um, will be in the protocol document or the reference guide as well. Yes, thank you, Mark. Is that sufficient? Okay. Um, all right, lovely. Okay, so we have about 20 minutes um, before we're supposed to wrap up. So rather than having you all sit and listen to someone talk, which you have been doing for about eight hours now, congratulations, you have survived. Um, oh, we have a question. Oh, we have a question. Oh. If you're not sure if you have right whale or humpback whale presence, is it fair to put possibly detect it for both? No, no, I'm not sure right whale for these. Yeah, so. Um, yeah, oh, Kirsten, you're leading us right into our examples. Um, yes, if you're, if you have, that's where the context comes in. If you have up calls, but you also have humpback song, um, depending on the, on the scenario, um, you might have to just say possibly for both. Um, that's gonna depend on context, right? Like you could have a really faint humpback song and if your eyes train to the seasonal pattern, maybe you can recognize that that is humpback song and then you have, um and all yes exactly all the pitch tracks are faint right um but then you have like these loud uh like bright red classified right whale up calls that fall out of the pattern like they don't fit in with the humpback song pattern um there are cases like that where you can say detected for both right whale and, and humpback um but sometimes it gets really uh kind of messy where the sometimes the up calls look like they could be part of the pattern um sometimes they definitely are part of the humpback song um, so that's a thing as well to be aware of. Yeah, I'm gonna take my. Uh, yes. Yeah, I unmuted. I unmuted myself. I, I don't think we'll have feedback. Okay. So one thing I find uh, um, people are can be kind of nervous about making a making a stand. So possibly detected becomes the fallback, and for some analysts 
there's lots and lots and lots of possibly detected because they're nervous about going one way or the other. And I would say uh, there's no need to do that. Uh, possibly detected is almost as if saying not detected. So if you don't feel like there's a lot of evidence, say no, so just say not detected. And if you feel li like you need to kind of justify that, just put some notes in. Um, the detected category is for cases where you're really confident about it and you really are, uh, you know, there's evidence there. There's, you could say, you could explain to your grandmother why you think that there are right whales present in this, in this, um, in this tally period. And so again, use the notes to, to say what you, what you think is going on. I, there are a lot of borderline cases and so possibly detected is a legitimate thing to put down. Um, but it, just be careful about overusing it. The possibly detected. The possibly detected. All right, folks. So um, for the last 15 minutes or so, um, in the email that I sent around to everybody, and I'll pull the, up the examples on the shared screen as well. Um, we probably won't have time to go through all of them. But I did send out um, just a few that I pulled from different deployments um, of pitch track periods that have some interesting, um, interesting stuff going on. So if we look at, uh, and this, the email should have been sent out to everybody um, here. So if we look at example one, um, this is from the Martha's Vineyard buoy. This is a few days ago. This is just uh, a really lovely example that I wanted to show you guys of some recent up calls, right whale up calls. Um, so again, here like this, these two up calls in panel eleven here. Um, this is a great example where we have classification. It's isolated. We don't have a lot of noise. We don't have humpback, uh, any obvious humpback song. Um, it's very loud. It's shapely, right? It's got a nice um, long, uh, pretty smooth shape, right? Same with this one. So this is just like, this is just a fun example of recent right whale up calls. Very long. Yeah, this is, oh, we love, we love periods like this. So that's a, that's a fun right whale up call. Um, example, the next example, um, I'm gonna let folks take a minute to look at. Uh, these are, these are he like these have already been analyzed. So if you don't wanna look at the kind of the answers, avoid scrolling all the way down to the bottom where the analyst scores um, for species presence. Um, but you can take a minute, uh, click into example two or any of the other examples um, and take a look at what's going on with the pitch tracks. Um, so I'm gonna give a minute or two for folks to kind of digest this period. Um, based on the scoring criteria, again, I think it's on page 96, there's the species quick guides, all four of them are there. Um, so this is just kind of like a fun little like practice sesh for uh, determining species presence. Um, if you want to be courageous, like very few of my high school students were, um, you can drop guesses in the chat for which species you think are present or possibly present. Um, but take a couple of minutes to look through this and then we can kind of go through it as a group.
Okay, folks, any guesses what species we have present here based on our quick guides? You can drop it in the chat or unmute. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll go to my chat. I know it's rough. You're You've been talked at all day. Oh, no, all of a sudden, we're asking so much. Eddie? It's okay if it's wrong. Anyone? Oh, You're yeah. Not oh, get, like, that's my wrong answers are great. awesome because guess what? That's a learning experience. I love wrong answers. And no pressure too. No pressure. No pressure. We're gonna give it five more seconds. And then we'll just give you. <laughs> <laughs> You're not being graded. <laughs> oh, we've got a hug <gasps> back. Kirsten, yes. Um Kirsten. Benwell and Humpback? Uh, yes, yes. Yes, I can confirm. Oh, great. Okay, anybody, um, as far as evidence, what cued you off to fin whale? Yeah. What was that, Nick? Yeah, like regular pulse trains, right? Like our, our species. Four, four, four. I was getting there. I was getting there. Quick guide. Yes, if you go back to your quick guide, um, at least four consecutive classified pulses, which we definitely have. So yes, fin whales. And then, um, yeah, cons yep, consistent IPI or internal interval, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Picky, picky. Um, but, um, and then we have humpback song here. Um, eat, like patterned, this is really nice when they have like kind of these paired up sweeps um because it just shows a really a really clear pattern without needing any other kind of call types right so this is a great example um where if you scroll down here for all of those who were wanting to look at the answer who already did right we have fin whale and humpback checked off as detected right so that's a that's a good example um For the sake of time, I'm just gonna go through. Um, this is a similar example um, to the one we just looked at, um, but it's got uh, it's got a lot more noise going on. So similar to the previous example, right? We have these paired calls. Um, so we do see a pattern here. We have a clear um, pulse train, right? As um, as Nick and Kirsten and other folks, I'm not sure about names, um, pointed out, right? You have like at least four consecutive classified fin whale pulses. So we can definitely say detected for fin whales here. Um, this is a this is a really tricky one to, to look at um, because the noise is really distracting, right? So we have a lot of faint clusters. Um, we can sometimes describe it as it looks like tangled yarn. Um, sometimes where it's just this really dense cluster of pitch tracks. Um, often just faint noise, especially if it's dark blue. Um, but what we want to look at here is uh, like the shape of the pitch track, right? So rather than all this, um, they're kind of jagged, there's a lot of artifacts underneath here, we can see these more smooth, defined upsweeps um, that we are, they're much more clear as, as being biological than um some of this stuff up here there's, there's there, there could be these could, could be, be calls, calls um here but it's just harder to say without this evidence um these more clear paired up sweeps um the, um, last, the last two examples here and those paired up sweeps occur in this exact same pattern that you saw in the last one correct yes, yes. Right. so that's so, the same yeah. the idea is that you'll learn learn what the, you'll learn what the what these patterns look like when you have these noiseless scenes right you're like oh that's definitely a humpback and i can see i can see the pattern 
And now if you take that and insert it into noise, that's what the next, what the next example was. But because your, your eyes sort of trained to those kind of 200 to 250 hertz upsweeps in pairs, you can pick that out of the noise. And that's why we have a human involved in this, because you can pick that out. It's really hard for the computer to do that. Yeah. 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 It could be so. Um, Angela's asking, like, is some of the noise? Um, could some of the noise also just be like, um, kind of unfamiliar humpback calls that aren't that aren't in the call library? Or you're talking about like the? Yeah, there's a six or six or six humpback I call types. I Think so. Actually, it should be down at the down at yeah. the bottom here. We have all the ignore them, yeah. yeah, fifteen. Yeah, we don't use the humpback classifications very yeah. often. But um, to uh, to kind of answer your question, question Angela, it's it's, uh, it's it's really important, important at that point to just look at, at the shape and the amplitude um, and, and the, the context, context really. So, so like, if, if there are a lot of artifacts, if it's faint, if they're kind of clustered and random, um, then it's really hard to say that that's not noise, right? So um, you might come across like every year we could get a brand new or multiple brand new humpback call types um, that just they're not in the call library yet. Um, and you start to see those in patterns, right? You'll start to pick those out and um, and we we really rely on um, the shape, the amplitude and the, the pattern context to be able to pick those out. Um, if it's random and dark blue and a lot of artifacts, be super, super skeptical of it. Um, so a really good exercise to do is, and I think we still have this, I think the Roseway Basin uh, is like this. Once we get the demon back, we can download the audio and we can put the spectrogram, the, the pitch tracks right next to the spectrogram in the exact same format. And you can look between the two and say, okay you know there's all this blue stuff and you marked it when in real time you marked it you're like there's lots of noise in this so you can come back and go to the go to the the um, tally period where you said there's lots of noise here and actually look at the spectrogram and say what the heck was that was it really a humpback sound or was a boat going by you know did this there's a lot of different noise processes that can make a bunch of cheese like that what did you call it Str bar tangled, yarn. Tangled, yarn. tangled yarn like that I like that uh and, and it's good to get familiar with those processes and one way to do that is to look at the pitch tracks next to this to the spectrograms and that's we've we've done that but it's i think that's a good exercise for people to do yeah um if if that was faint for anybody online uh if you go to the roseway basin uh uh, reference project, which is linked, it's multiple linked multiple times throughout the reference document. Um, the actual spectrograms, um, because we, that's a deployment, you know, it's a it's a finished deployment where we've gotten the actual um, full acoustic data back, um, and the the full spectrograms are transposed right next to the uh, pitch track data. So you can see, you can like cases where there's noise or um, or biological calls. You can go in and look at um the actual spectrograms compared to the pitch tracks and that can be a great way to kind of train your eye as to like uh if you're used to looking at spectra spectrograms which most um analysts are right you can see what you would normally see in a spectrogram versus what it looks like as pitch track data so that's a great a great um reference project to go in and look at all right. I will warn you, there's a lot of platform noise in that Roseway Basin. It was early days with the glider, so we've, we've learned how to quiet the glider a lot more since then. Yeah. yeah. But it's, it's really instructive to do that. So I, I, I encourage that. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, okay, so in the last few minutes here, um, this example is uh, just to terrify everyone of what you can come across. Um, and so as we scroll down here, we can start to pick out, there's these 
possible up calls. This one's classified here with call type eight as right whale. Um, these, that one's not even, that's just a spec, but that, you know, that could be very, very faint possible. We keep scrolling. I'll talk about the classified fin whale stuff in a minute. Also a mess. Um, we start seeing uh, more of those faint up calls here. A couple, of, uh, a couple more of them are classified as right whale. Here's a bunch of them here that are faint and unclassified. We keep going. This, ugh, tangled yarn, scary. May be something, but um, be really, really skeptical when it just, it looks like a mess. It's not defined. Yes, Mark, you have to make up a story. Don't make up stories. Um, if it looks like a mess, it probably is. Uh, and then down here, um, so, okay, great. We only had up calls. Maybe that's like a right whale repeatedly calling. And then, ugh, you have up calls. And then all of a sudden it turns into humpback song. Um, you can recognize these. These are uh, notes that are... Um, They've, we've seen them before in song examples. Um, they're well, done, well known, these down sweeps. So um, this is to the kind of to the trained eye and you can even to the untrained eye, you can start to see that pattern. Um, and they're, the shape is, you know, it's smoother. There aren't a lot of artifacts. Um, it looks more like a drawn line, right? So uh, it goes right into humpback song, which is concerning. Here's a, it's a possible humpback call with an up call underneath it. So it can get really complicated um, as far as like, is this a right whale and then, and then a humpback or is it a humpback with up call bouts and then developing into like actual recognizable humpback song. Um, so this one down here, um, we know there's humpback, right? Because we have the recognized or recognizable humpback song um, and then possibly right whale because with the context, right? We can't necessarily say for sure. It could be humpback up calls, but it can get pretty messy. Uh, the fin whale pulses are really concerning, right? So we're not seeing uh, consistent intervals between the pulses. They're classified, which is good, but that also could mean that they're just, they just happen to be at 20 Hertz, right? So be really, really, really skeptical if it's just this like kind of randomly spaced through a cluster of three, um, they're not even the amplitude and length of them is not really consistent, right? So um, the fin whale. So this period was scored as not detected for fin whale because uh, we don't have those four consecutive classified four plus consecutive classified pulses. And the last thing, right at the end here, this is just a really fun period that I included. Um, I don't know who coined the term. Maybe Marky did, but we grand the grand slam is when we catch all four species in one 15 minute period. Um, so this is just a fun one that I wanted to include for you guys to look at. Um, we have say whales, fin whales, right? We have, hey, that's a, they're close together right there. That's a weird one. Um, doesn't follow the typical three seconds apart. Um, but we have say whale doublets, right? Multiple classified singlets. We have um, some funky, uh, uh, fin whale stuff going on, but if, as we scroll down, it smooths out into a clearer fin whale pulse train. We have some faint humpback song. And then we've also got up calls interspersed that don't fall into the humpback song pattern. We have some uh, classified ones that are classified as right whale. So um, these are extremely rare where you get a case where you have all four species in one period, but they do exist and they're out there and they're fun. Um, so. Yeah, can you go back down to the humpback and right whales yes there's another point to be made is that the, the humpback the humpback call you see is sort of regular at 400 hertz um and it's pretty faint but the right whale calls are much louder and so when we're when we're looking at humpback and, and right whales sort of in the same in the same tally period we look at the the pattern of the humpback calls and see if the right whale falls into that pattern in this case it doesn't and we look at the amplitude of the humpback calls versus the right whale calls. Here, the right whale calls are much louder. Humpback whale calls are much fainter. So they're likely not in the same, those two sounds are probably not coming from the same place. And so that's another way we try to 
distinguish between yeah the two. overlapping yeah, calls overlapping must be a good indicator calls um and this is also um i don't think i made a note of this for you there's the weird say whale uh classification um thing where you can get call type 17 um, which is a humpback call type but it can it can pick up say whale actual say whale down sweeps we have a similar case where call type 18 is a call type that was made for humpback up sweeps um which i think mark was talking about earlier um that it gets really or jen was where it gets really kind of messy when you start making call types for humpback up sweeps because it can pick up right whale um so this could be a right whale up call a faint very faint right whale up call um we can't say for sure but uh sometimes they do get classified as call type 18. um it's uh another uh piece of evidence that this might be a right whale up call is that it's directly overlapped with uh, a humpback note right so um it could be a, a right whale vocalizing at the same time so we are a few minutes past uh any final questions We'll be right behind you. Oh, no, I no. think everyone's burned up and ready to call the <laughs> I know. It's oh, my gosh. Oh, gosh. Oh, oh, we do have yeah. a question. Oh. Any reason why this wouldn't also be useful at higher frequencies? No. Uh, There's no, no reason it wouldn't be. Uh, useful at higher frequencies. You can do this with dolphin whistles. Um, and I'm working on a system to try to do uh, very broad, uh, wide band processing to do from blue whales to beaked whales with tonal detection. So no, there's no reason why you couldn't do this at higher frequencies.